Hi everyone, welcome back. I am filming my third <laughs> video of my kind of Christmas December seasonal thing. If I sound awful, I've had a really bad like cold, so I'll try not to wheeze too much um, through this. Anyway, what are we going to do for the third one? Do you remember a while ago I ordered a whole load of heat resistant batting? And I said, oh, I'm gonna do something with that and I need oven gloves and all of that. And it's been kicking around my sewing room forever. I thought how fun it would be to do some oven mitts. It might not seem terribly like Christmassy or seasonal or whatever, but it's a really nice, easy make. And I'm actually in this video making some Christmas presents and I'm rather hoping that the people I'm making them for won't watch the video. I thought about what I, what fabric I would use and hear me out for this one. And could, you could use any sort of like quilting cotton or off cuts of things. I think probably the most important thing is that it's not fuzzy, you know, so not like terry toweling or something like that, just a, a nice flat fabric, so like a cotton, a linen, something like that. I thought how cool would it be if you used vintage tea towels? So I wanted to show you some of the vintage tea towels that I've found. Like, isn't this gorgeous? It's got like a great big, like a Dutch painting flowery still life. Isn't it fantastic? It's amazing what you can get. Look at these with teapots on. These are all the different ones. I'm not going to show you all of them. I'll show you most of them. Isn't this cute? This one, this is a vintage Liberty tea towel that would work really well out of linen as well. The ones I'm going to be working with are this one and this one. They're for two different people. For this one I also found an off cut of fabric. This is 1970s, I think this is 1960s. The colours are pretty good together and I thought this would look really nice as the lining. This one I think I've got plenty of like blues and things like that to to do bindings and things. So my plan is to make like an oven mitt shape which is sort of like that, like a bit of thumb part. Obviously it needs to be big enough to go around your hand but it also needs, the pattern needs to be big enough to cope with six layers of fabric because you'll need the outer layer, so we're using a tea towel, so we're going to cut one for the front and one for the back for that. And then for the wadding itself, we need two layers of that, one for the front, one for the back. Obviously you want a lining as well. Now the lining doesn't have to be anything fancy. You could just use um, a bit of um, an old sheet or a pillowcase or, you know, um, any sort of off cuts of thinnish fabric. I'm going to go and try and work out how to draw this shape at the right size. It is the next day. I've decided I'm going to work on this one because I've already chosen a lining fabric so that makes it nice and easy for me. And I've had a bit of a think about how I'm going to do this and I think I'm going to use the bag method. I've got here an oven mitt, this is a neoprene one, this is my partner's one that I bought him and it's actually quite snugly fitting and obviously it doesn't need loads and loads of padding or anything like that but I thought it was a good mitt shape so I want it to be the finished size about a half an inch bigger all the way around anyway and then I need about half an inch for seam allowances and things like that and to turn it through. So what I'm going to do, just draw around this. If you've got a normal padded mitt, you could just roughly draw around that and then put a seam allowance on it. So whatever you like to use as a seam allowance. So now I'm going to put in the half inch that I want to make it bigger. So that's the actual size I want it. And then I need to put the seam allowance on. So you can see that this has got a little bit more blunt. So I might have to just extend the thumb up a bit first, just because it's just going to get more and more, the curve's going to get softened as we add more seam allowance and stuff. I'm going to cut all the pieces out. So I'm going to cut out two linings, two of the front, um, you know, the outside bit, and two of wadding out of this.
Okay, I've cut out all of the bits that I need, so I've cut out two front slick, they're the same, yay! And two wadding, and it's really thick, it's, it's really nice quality stuff actually, I'm impressed. And I've cut out two of the lining as well. So just a note on this, um, this heat resistant wadding stuff, if you can't get this, what you could do is if you've got an old um, wool jumper or a, an old wool blanket, if you put some pieces on a hot wash to felt it you could use that instead and that's what people used to use as a insulating layer in that way so you would felt it first which will pull all the fibers together and um, try and end up with something that's about I think this is about a quarter of an inch thick just less than that I think it would be nice to have it sort of quilted so that when you're picking it up you haven't got loose fabric so that this and this is together but I tried to mark the wadding and it won't mark. So then I thought, well, how about I do it from the front? So I'm just about to try and mark that. So I just line this up I'm using a 45 degree angle so that I can mark up in the same place on both of them. And what I thought was I could put um, like a dark green in the top thread and then have white in the bottom. And I think this will just give it that little bit of um, a bit more of a sort of a finish to it. I actually want to go back the other way but I don't think these marks are going to hold up to me marking back the other way so it's going to be a little bit of toing and froing. Right so I'm going to take that away and so you can't see that I know but there is two inch marks across there so eventually it will have like little squares going all the way across. Mm -hmm. When all of the, these bits have been quilted, what I am proposing to do is to do the bag method. I'm going to, first of all, stitch the lining to this part along the wrist, and it'll be this seam here. So I'm going to stitch that together with that, and then it'll all be one piece of fabric, and then I will clip some of the wadding away just so it sits flatter, and then do that on both the pieces, and then put them right sides together and then start stitching I think this is the best place to do it about here and then stitch all the so that'll be the opening there stitch all the way down and around all the way and come back to here and then turn it through that might not be quite right okay I'll go and have a think about that so I've finished both of these so we've got a mirror image and they've been quilted on the machine just in squares it's not an exact science now what I need to do is stitch this and this together and I've made a little hanging loop so you can hang the whole thing up near your, your stove or your cooker or whatever. If I put that about half an inch in from the outside and stitch it into this seam it should be right on the corner, just about close enough anyway. And then this is the lining and I'm going to stitch the right side to the right side, do a half inch seam allowance along here and so that will be caught nicely in there and so I'm just going to put a couple of pins through to hold it in place so if I get them both pinned up here's the other one they look pretty good don't they all made out of a vintage tea towel then here's the other lining so again right side to right side now I'll go and stitch both of these together we'll pin it all together and do the last lot of stitching I'll just say one thing when you're stitching through a lot of layers so I've got 
all three layers of the glove and then I've got another six layers for this hanging loop because I folded it into three. Just sew very slowly. If you just keep sew sewing slowly, it should, the needle should go through it. So now we want to trim off some of this just to make it a bit less bulky. You could try and um, cut it quarter of an inch smaller than the main pattern piece all the way around but it moves around so much when you're sewing it I didn't think that was a good idea so that's a bit better now you can see how much I cut off there so when this is all stitched together this bit will just sit nicely like this it's going to need a little bit of encouragement but it will sit in there like that so there's the hanging loops like so and then that will be the bit where you put your hand in and we have to have these right sides together now and make sure that loops out the way I'm not going to stick a pin back in it because um, when I'm turning it through it'll make it a bit more difficult so the main thing here is to match up places like these linings here we'll stick a pin through that bit we need to pin all the same points together so like the thumb the top of the hand part there So here we are, here are the finished oven mitts masquerading as Christmas stockings and I think they came out really really well. I hope you have a go, it's actually super easy and so fun and I think I might have found a new hobby. And I just wanted to say thank you as always for all your support. I really couldn't do it without you, just the fact that people show up and watch these videos means so much to me and I really appreciate all your comments. So I hope you all have a gorgeous Christmas and I'll see you again soon. Bye.